Great. So we've had our reading this morning from Psalm 121. And I don't know about you, but those of you who know me will know that I'm really rubbish at asking for help. There's a few nods maybe going on around there. Um, I guess you could say I've got a little bit of a stubborn streak um, in that um, I'm convinced time and time and time again that I can do things in my own strength and I can do things myself. To be fair, that has got me in a fair few pickles over the years. Um, when I don't stop and ask for help, things like um, the time I drove all the way to Weatherby, convinced that I had not missed the sign for Wakefield. Now, for those of you who will know, Weatherby and Wakefield are about 35, 40 miles apart from each other. And I had to ring my dad in the end and say, I'm like two junctions away from Weatherby. And he was like, what? I thought you were going to Wakefield. Um, I am. And he had to get the map out at home. It was before the days of sat-nav. I know I don't look old enough, but it was before the days of sat-nav. And uh, he, yeah, he basically had to reroute me back down whatever road it was that I was on, because I can't remember, um, to Wakefield. So I had to ring and ask for help. There's also the time that I decided I was going to put a new picture up in my, um, in my room. And um, I'd seen it done hundreds of times before. I'd observed the greats, like Paul Quincy, putting up pictures. I was like, it doesn't look that hard. Um, so my chosen implement for putting up said picture was a tin of chickpeas, because I didn't have a hammer. It's actually very hard to hammer a nail into a wall with a tin of chickpeas. I should have asked for help. I didn't. What I ended up doing was making a massive hole in the wall where all the plaster fell off. But when I put the picture up, nobody knew until I had to uh, leave my rented accommodation and mend that rather large hole, um, which I did ask for help. So I, I did learn. Um, so that's like practical help, isn't it? Um, there's more practical help that we can, we can get. So if we wanted to cook something, for example, um, I'm not a good cook, despite my surname being cook. That means absolutely nothing. So when we cook something, we might want to use, I'm gonna find a nice recipe. We might want to use a cookbook. How many of you like to use a cookbook? Oh, not many. Oh, I didn't think you would put your hand up, Sue. Your baking is always amazing. So if we wanted to bake something, um, maybe a strawberry cheesecake, looks nice, doesn't it? I can guarantee you, if I attempted to bake this using this book, mine would look absolutely nothing like that at all. Um, but we would use a cookbook. It tells us our ingredients. It tells us our instructions. It's meant to be very straightforward. Follow everything, and you too will create something as beautiful as this. Um, or maybe we want to go on a journey, or we want to go for a, a walk somewhere. Um, in that instance, we would um, we'd use a map or a sat-nav. I mean, both are useless to me because I can't follow them. I can't open a map either. Um, if we wanted to find Robin Hood, for example, uh, we could use this Ordnance Survey map of Sherwood Forest, and um, we, could, we could take our guidance from this, and it would lead us to where Robin Hood lives. Everybody on board with that? So we can see how things are useful. I'm going to get someone else to put that away. Um, <laughs> I'm going to ask for help. Um, so they're very practical and useful ways of asking for help. But what about when life gets a little bit difficult? How and where do we find our help when things outside of a practical nature become hard? So this is why I love Psalm 121. I'm going to read that verse to you again. Let's just remind ourselves. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Now, the reason I love this psalm is because it tells me exactly where my help comes from. It doesn't kind of imply anything or hint at something. It tells me exactly where my help comes from. But in order to receive that help from the maker of heaven and earth, I first have to do something, and I have to lift my eyes. And for me, that's like a really key part of that passage. I have to lift my eyes up to the mountains. Now, I don't know about you, but Lincoln seems to be lacking somewhat in mountains. Um, we do have um, a hill. Thank you, Claire. Yes, everyone's like, oh, steep hill. Um, I'm glad that, you know, in order to find God, I don't have to go and lift my eye to, to steep hill. Um, but I think for me personally, what that means is we lift our eyes to creation. It talks about God being the maker of heaven and earth. 
So we lift our eyes and we look at God's creation. So you might want to lift your eyes. And the thing I love about Lincolnshire is like the big blue skies that you get here. It's like they're so vast and they're not always blue, but the clouds and like, they're just like, it takes my breath away. When I was driving to the beach on Friday and I said to Kath about six times, look at the sky, look at the sky. It's like vast. Like you can't not look at the sky and just see like God, the creator. You can lift your eyes and you can look at the trees around you. You can lift your eyes and you can see the birds and the butterflies. And there's so much of creation um, around us when we lift our eyes. So by lifting our eyes and looking at creation, the birds, the sky, the trees, the flowers, we remember that God is all around us. There isn't anywhere you can be where you can't see God's hand in creation. He's the maker of heaven and earth. And that's where we find our help. We find our help in him. So how many of you know, this certainly is me, that when I'm caught in a situation that I find challenging, whether that's a falling out with a friend or someone being unkind to me or a work situation that's got me a bit worried or maybe a loved one that's unwell, um, it can be really difficult, like really difficult to stop and to remember to lift your eyes. It has to be a conscious decision to invite God into where you are and into what's happening. A conscious decision to stop, to take your eyes off what's around you, where you get lost in that overwhelming sense of life being hard. (laughs) To stop and to lift your eyes, to remember that God the maker of heaven and earth is there. He's just waiting for you to involve him, to ask him, to invite him in. And in doing that, we can find peace in the hardest of situations. It's peace that you can't even explain. It's peace that passes all understanding. We find hope. We can find healing. And we find God's unfailing love. And we just have that sense of God being for us. You see, the truth is that God always wants to help us. And um, we might think differently on that, depending on what your relationship with God is like. I know I've struggled with that over the years. Like, is God really on my side? Um, You know, does he look at me and, like, what does he see? But actually, what I've learned over time is that God just loves me for who I am. He loves you for who you are. And he always wants to help us. He wants, to, he wants us to look to him in our moment of need. He will never let us down. Um, now, that doesn't mean, disclaimer, that doesn't mean that God will always give us what we asked for. Um, but he does give us what's best for us. And because he's God, like he can see far more than we can see with our earthly eyes. And so he always gives us what's best for us. um, We don't often understand that until we kind of look back into a situation and when we can see like the fingerprints of where God's been at work. And then a bit further on in that Psalm uh, 121, in verse 8, it says that God will watch over our comings and goings now and forevermore. That blows my mind a little bit, if I'm being honest. God watching over me, watching over you every day until eternity like you're never on your own like God watches over you always he never sleeps I don't know how he does it I am cranky when I've not had enough sleep but he never everyone's nodding thank you um (laughs) um, but he never sleeps which for me means that if I wake up in the night and I've had a bad dream, or I wake up anxious about something, or I'm afraid, or I've remembered that I haven't done something at work, and I get all, oh, and I get a bit out of control in my thought processes. The good news is, God's awake. And I can stop and go, oh, I really need your help at the moment, God. I'm, I'm a bit overwhelmed. I really want some peace so I can go back to sleep. And he's there. He's available all the time. So throughout the Bible, God promises to always be with us, which means we can trust him for anything and everything we need. So even though we can't see God with our own eyes, and we might not always hear him like we can hear our mum and dad or our friends, we can know in our hearts that God is always there. He always wants to hear from us. Even when it feels hard, we should ask God for help. We should lift our eyes. He's always stronger 
than the problem that we face. And he always promises to protect us and never leave us. So this week, I want you all just take a minute now, actually, and just think, where do you go when you need help? Where's your go-to when you need help? And then maybe think about where in your life do you need God's help? Where is it that you're keeping your eyes firmly fixed downwards? Where is it that you need to lift your eyes and ask for God's help? And are there situations at the moment that you're facing where you need to lift your eyes and look to God? And I want you to hold on to those questions. I'm going to say them again. Um, And during um, communion a little bit later, we'll have the opportunity um, for prayer ministry. Um, And I know sometimes that's a big step to go and ask someone to help you and have some prayer. But that's what this is all about today. (laughs) It's all about asking God for help. So where are you going for your help? Where in your life do you need God's help? And what situations are you facing where you need to lift your eyes and look to God? Amen.